and remember. And I'm not gonna say I'm a pro in using Stiller, but I, at least I've been using it for some time. So, but it's, I mean, it's not all, you know, everything that's in Stiller that I know. So what I'm hoping for in this class is that if, for instance, I, I miss something or I, I don't talk about something, you can, you can bring it to my attention, right? Or if I if I get anything wrong, just just let me know. Because it's it's also a, a learning platform for me. Um, that being said, we let's delve into what the study is going to be about, and it's just about Stata, right? Stata is just um, a statistical package that is basically it's mostly used by econ people, as well as people from non econ fields. Um, so, for instance, in my department, um, I know most of the professors here use Stata, even though there are there are other programs like R that are that are very very important. But but in I mean, most equal people use Stata, and it's very important, very 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 important. It's just like packages like SPSS, and just like SAS, EViews, and all that. So, if you know how to use SPSS, I think Stata should be quite easy. Um, this is the outline of today's study. We, we are first going to look at the interface and some key features. And then we delve into how to create log files and then do, do files. We're also going to look at data management. Um, so we'll be looking at how to open data, how to save data, how to import and export. Basically, import and export in Excel files. Um, and then we look at some basic Commands and sy syntax. So, so, sir, can you increase your volume some more? My, oh, you can't hear me. Sorry. We can sorry. hear you. We can now. hear you. Increase your own volume, please. Yeah, All right. So, can you can should increase his own. But, can you hear me now? Yeah. We can hear you. We can hear him. We can hear you loud and clear. <laughs> okay. Sorry. We we will also be looking at some basic commands and stata in sorry syntax in stata. So one thing about Stata is, um, and, and not just about Stata. So, you know, this is with AI, it's quite easy to get commands on the internet, right? So you just put into GPT, that I mean, so how do I run this command? Or what's a command to, you know, open data in Stata? I mean, it's, you just spit it out for you. But we look at some basic commands, such as how to install packages in Stata, how to open, open data and all that. And then we briefly talk about dealing with missing data, data cleaning. And I'm saying briefly because I feel like dealing with missing data is more of like a statistical pro problem than what I'll be talking about. So, I mean, we'll delve into it. So you guys will get what I'm, what I'm trying to say. And then we'll also be talking about creating variables. We'll be generating new variables, we'll be renaming variables and then labeling variables. And then we'll combine data sets because obviously we have the different data sets that in, in our analysis, we more often tend to like um, combine different data sets either from the same source or from different sources. And then we'll do some basic summary statistics. We talk about mean, median, variance, and then we visualize data. We talk about bar charts, scatter plots, box plots, and all that. And then finally, we talk about ANOVA, analysis of variance. Um, so truth be told, this is my first time doing ANOVA. This is my first time learning ANOVA. Um, and it was just today that I even started because I didn't know it was going to be part of this um, session. So what I, what I really focused on was correlation and simple regression and all that. But I mean, we're not going to cover that because I heard it's going to be for next, next week. So let's start with the interface and key features in Stata. Um, so Stata has like six different windows. We, we have the command window. That's exactly where you type in your, your commands and your syntax. Um, that's exactly where you, where you also perform statistical analysis. You, plots, graphs, and all that. And I'm going to show you the term. Um, we also have the results window. 
And the result window basically displays your results from your statistical analysis. Oh, yeah. And then the third one is on, or oh, is the variables window. Um, so the variables window displays the variables you, you have loaded in your stata, right? And then if you, you create any other new variable, it shows in the variables window. Um, and then we have the review window. The review window is very, very important. Um, so anytime you, you open your data, your state and you're working with it, and then you enter a new command, that is where it's being kept. The command is being kept at the review window. And then later on, if you want to copy it and then send it to your do file, it just becomes easy for you to like copy and then paste into your do file. Um, we also have the properties window. So the properties window is just about um, the properties of that, are, that is already open. And then we have the graph window, which is not really obvious. It comes out when you run or you graph anything in Stata. And that's how it looks like. This, this is for Stata 12 and then 13. Um, so as you can see, we have the output, output window. We have the commands window. That is why you can see the right commands here, right? We have the variables in data set here. That's the variables window. We have property of each variable here. That's the properties window. And we have the history or the review window. And then down there is where Stata keeps or saves anything you save in Stata. Um, okay. All right, so the next thing is going to be on the key features of Stata. Let me share my Stata, my screen to my Stata. Let's see. Um, which which of my screens do you see? Stata screen. Yes. Yeah. All right. screen is up. So this is a file, file menu, right? And then at the file menu, we have open. This is where we'll be able to open our new data in Stata. If you want to open any, any um, data in Stata, that's what we do. Um, apart from opening your data this way, um, the simple way to be able to open our Stata is to use command, which is quite clean and simple. We can also create a do file using this command. We'll be able to create a log file using this command. So you just click on log, begin, and then we'll be able to create it. We are going to do that later on. And then just as I said, we can also import data into Stata from the file menu. Right. Um, With the imports, we can import spreadsheet. We can import XLS uh, document. We can import C CSV document. We can import document. We can import SAS document and all that. And we can also export data. Uh, one other thing we can do with this file menu is. Professor, um, people should mute. Down. People should mute. The one to mute, mute please. Everyone. Can you mute your mic? <laughs> Organizers should mute people. Yeah, I think they should do that. All right, can I go on? Yeah, you can go on, yes. sir. Let's go ahead. Hello, everyone. I think we've lost touch with uh, the presenter for a short moment. I'm yes, not sure. I, think, I, was, I was on mute, sorry. Okay, oh, okay. I think you muted okay. yourself. Yeah, yeah. Back. I'm back, yeah. Please only unmute yourself if you are going to ask questions. Thank you.
So one other thing we can also do with Stata is, I mean, with a file menu is to exit Stata. If you want to exit your Stata, you just um, come here and exit it. And then importantly, I think this today's the first day I, I saw this in Stata. So when you open your file menu, right, and then you scroll down to example data sets, Stata has so many variables that are like inbuilt that we can use for practice. So we can all do this together. You come to example data set, right? And then you click on it. When you click, do you, do you see my screen now? Yes, yes. Yeah, so we have 1.2.2 data set, right? Um, let's no, go down no, no, to no, 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 no. Can you people mute everybody, please? Hello, everyone. So I think we are abusing, oh. unmuting, or giving you access to unmute yourself so you can ask questions. Maybe we should mute everyone, then we lose the option to ask questions. Is that okay? Questions should be questions should be typed on chat. Yes, please. sir. That's fine. Yeah, that's yeah that's I that's think that'll be fine. You just type the question on chat. It makes. I think if someone wants to yeah. ask question, the person can raise their hands by the uh, emoji ones. Ah, uh, because the presenter may lose the questions if they go to chat. Kindly let uh, us help each other. Okay, so mm -hmm. I'm still not going to mute everyone. So please, let's try and exercise some of these things for us. Okay, thank you. Yeah. So moving on. Depending on which data version you're using, you, you have access to Stata manual data sets. So you click on Stata. For, so for me, I'm using Stata 18, right? So I click on Stata 18 manual data sets. And then there are so many data sets that we can use. Um, today, we are going to use the first one. That's base reference manual. And it has so many data, lots of data. Um, we'll be using data from the ANOVA example to be to be running our ANOVA, but we are not there yet. So let's move on. The other the other menu that is on data is the edit menu. Um, so we can use the edit menu to copy our outputs from you know our results and even from our web processor and all that. And then we have the data menu, which is which is very, very important, just like the other menus we've talked about. So with the data menu, we can be able to describe our data. We can be able to open our data editor. We can be able to change and even create new data with it. We can um, use it to label our data sets. We can even use it to merge and append data and several other, other uses. We also have the graphics menu, which basically is to um, plot graphs. So we can do two-way graphs, we can do bar charts, box plots, histogram, we can do scatter plots and all that. We'll be, we'll be doing examples later on, so don't worry. And then we have the statistics menu, that's basically for um, summary statistics, regression analysis, ANOVA and all that. And then we have user. So the user menu is actually a place to store any user-generated commands. I don't think I use this menu often. And then the Windows menu, which we can also use it to open a new do file. So for instance, be able to open a new do, a new, a new do file you scroll to Windows menu, you scroll down to do file editor, and then you click on new do file editor, and it opens. So this is a do file, a very useful place to be able to keep all your state of commands, you know, to be able to not forget what you've been able, what you've been doing over the period and, you know, be able to have them intact anytime you want to go back to your commands. And, the last one is the help menu, which is very important. So normally when you're running this data, you run into several issues. And the help, the help menu is a very useful menu for you to be able to find out what's 
problem you faced, right, or you are facing. Let me go back to my screen. Um, so, yeah, the next thing we're going to do is open an existing data set. Um, do, you, do you guys all have the earnings, earnings and height data set? Yeah. Uh, yes, please. It was shared, right. so uh, you can see. Yeah. Proceed. All right. So we are going to first open the earnings and height data set, and this is a very interesting data set. It was, I think, it was a data that was used to um, run this study that was on height, ability, and earnings. And the basic hypothesis, the basic idea behind the paper was that. Even though it's very it's very funny and interesting uh, that taller people are very smart and that they they tend to earn higher wages than short people. <laughs> and I think it's a paper that was published in like a top journal. Um, so let's go back to Stata and start. So which, me which method do you use to measure that? That taller, taller people are smarter than the shorter ones? <laughs> I mean, that's this is the data we are going to open. I, I've not really read much into the paper, but I just read the abstract. I didn't even finish reading the abstract. But looking at the data, I'm quite sure they might have used two stages, this square, or basically OLS. Because it's, it looks like a cross-sectional data. So basically, either OLS or two-stage this square. OK, so to be able to open your new, your new data set, right, you click on File. Um, I hope we are all doing this together. So you click on File. You click on Open. And then you search on your computer, wherever you stored your data sets, right? So for me, it's on desktop. I saved it in the Stata class folder. So I opened Stata class. And then I look for earnings and height, which is in this folder. And then I click on it. And then it opens, right? But Stata is smart that anytime you want to open your data, you don't really need to like, you know, go through all these steps. So what you need to do is look for the code that does that simple simply for you right let's let's clear our our data uh, our data to be able to clear your data you just click on or you just type clear in your command with wi command window and then click on enter and then everything clears from your data any data you've loaded in your data clears but not the com i mean not the commands in the command window that doesn't clear unless you exit from stata so, so rather than going through the steps that we just went through to open our data, we can just deal with or work with the command, right? You just paste it in your command window and then enter, and then it opens for you. So there are two ways. You either go through the file window or you just enter the command. So that's it with opening exit, existing data set in Stata. The next thing to do is our data editor and data browser. So these two things look so common. I mean, they look so similar, but then they are, they do different things, right? They do different things. And as the name says, for data editor, open your data editor, you'll be able to type in, or you'll be able to edit your data. So let's go back to Stata and then see what our data editor is. Um, so the data editor is just at, you see where the statistics menu is, right? Just right beneath the statistics menu, that's a data editor. You click on it and then it opens your data for you. So these are data we are dealing with, height and 
the heightened um, earnings data. And then in it, we have the sex variable, we have age variable, we have education, class of workers, region, race. But one thing that makes data editor different is that anytime you open your data in this form with data editor, you'll be able to edit it. So for instance, you can click on any part of um, these cells, right, and edit it. Right, you can type anything you can. You can input new data and all that. Be able to edit it, which makes it different from data browser. Let's explore what the data browser is all about. The data browser is just the, um, it's just close to the data editor, right? It's just to the right of data editor. So when you click on data browser or data browse, you won't be able to edit it. So with that, you, you just want to be able to browse your data and see what data you are doing, dealing with, right? There is no way you can edit it. Um, aside clicking on these uh, buttons, one way you can open data editor is just to enter this command in data, ed, and then click on enter. And it opens, right? We can edit it, as I said. If you want to browse your data, you click on, or you type BR, or browse, enter, and then you'll be able to browse your data sets, or simply BR. Then you'll be able to open your data sets, and then see what you're dealing with. Please, are we clear with um, the difference between data browser and data editor? Yeah, but I have a question. Yes. Okay. Can I go on? Sorry. Hello. 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 Yeah. I can you can you go on? Hello. Can you okay. hear me? Can you? Yeah. Hello. I got short. Um, because I changed, I interchanged when we were talking about importing of your uh, data. I, I didn't get how you imported the data. Please can um, you... is do you mean opening data sets or importing data? Yeah, opening data sets because data sets. I saw that you got the ending and height. So I want to know how you imported into the variable window. So much. Okay, so all right, so let's go back to opening data sets. In data, do you see my data screen? No, please. Yes. Yeah, I can see. I can see. Yeah. So to be able to open your hello, I also sorry, I also need help on how to open the, open the data set. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, that's what I'm. That's what I'm going to talk about. So, so to be able to open data set in in data, right? You just click on file. All right. So so first, let me clear my data. You realize I don't have anything at the variables window, right? It's just empty. It says there are no items to show. So I do not have any data in data, right? Um, uh, hello, Joseph. Yeah. Please, can you clear all so that we will have a blank uh, okay. data then I, so I, that I'll it won't get people confused? All right, I would have to exit data then. OK. <sighs> Do you see my status screen? Yes. Yeah, yes, we can see. So yeah, so this this screen now is blank. I mean, there is no data in data, right? There is mm -hmm. nothing at all. So to be able to open your data sets, click on File. It's at the top. Do you see it? Yeah. And then click on Open. And then look for wherever you saved your data sets. So wherever you saved the earnings and height data sets. For me, I saved it on my desktop. That's why I've clicked on desktop, right? And then on desktop, 
I saved it in the Stata class. I created a folder called Stata class. That's why I have the data. Are you following? I don't know wherever you saved your data, but you can look for it. Okay. Hi, Joseph, please okay, let me help okay. you here. So what, mm. where he is, his, his plan is different from yours on your computer. Yeah. So wherever that you save the weekly practice pen, go and look for the earning and height, height mm. uh, uh, data set. Then you follow him where he has got into. Are you guys following? Yeah. All right. So have you seen where you saved your data? Yes. OK. The next thing to do, so if it's in a folder, you open the folder. Mine is in Stata class folder, so I open it. And then within the Stata class folder, I have different data set. I have like append one, append two, minute one data, merge one, merge two missing data. Then I have earnings and heights, which is in a, in a different folder, right? So I open it again. And then this is the, this is the data I'm looking, I'm trying to look, I mean, I'm trying to open in Stata. So I double click on it or I click on it and then click on open and then it opens. So anytime you open a you open a data in Stata, you will see the variables listed in the variables window. We've already talked about the variables window. Is that right? Have you guys been able to open it now? Yes. 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 Yeah, and then we okay. talked about data editor, right? Yeah. Yeah. So when so, you click, oh, oh, so, mm. sorry, where is the where is the variables window? Um. So look to your right in the data. You see variables. So you should be able to see variables like sex, age, MRD, which represents marital status. Yes, yes sir. Thank you. I can see. Okay, very good. So, so those are the variables you have opened in your data, right? Good. And I talked about how to browse this data set you have. You just type BR and click on enter. You'll be able to see the data set you have in Stata. So you have like sex, which has like zero if the person is a female, one if the person is a male. You have age, you have marital status, you have education, which is measure, measured in years of schooling, right? And you have other variables. Do that again. Do that move again. Sorry. Do that move. Again. So finally, to, to, okay. to browse your data set, right? Uh, yeah. The, yeah. The command yeah. to you. enter is BR. You can just enter BR and enter or BR O W S E. Browse. Thank you. And then click on enter. You'll be able to Where browse. Do you where do we enter it? I don't see. Yeah. Please so, write. so anytime oh. you want to enter a command in Stata, you look for the command window. It's at the, it's down. You see command. Why is it? At the bottom, I think. Yeah. You see command. Do you see command? It's it's in blue. Oh, where is it in your in your window? Where is it in your window? Um, check your check your window at the bottom. Your own window. You you question. Yeah. Send a message. It, it, it's it in blue. It's in blue. The, the color is blue, so it's just down. Do you see it? Okay, okay. Yes, yes. Yeah. So that's where you Please. type in your command. Can we all okay. allow him to have a good flow mm -hmm. so that because that is why I believe they are recording these classes. So that at the end. They put it there, and then we can go over. Otherwise, I don't think it will be understandable. Okay, 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 okay. Sorry, so I, I write me. B R B R. Time I need to add to something. Me. Can I? Yeah, go on. B R. Uh, the first thing we can just drag the file of data and put it on the data so that it will open. The second thing I want to add 
Normally, the data is not in the TTA file. It's we, we are exporting it or importing it from Excel. You should teach that also. So we, we can we, use so the Excel we, sheet to we've import. Not, we've not got into that part yet. It's it's part of oh, what we are going to do. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So so yeah, so that's a good you point, have, actually. So, you, you have said B R O G R. B. B oh. as in boy. Oh, so um, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry for interrupting. Please, I'm very sorry. But please, can we can we just allow him finish? Because this thing is being recorded. We can yeah. all watch afterwards. Let's allow him flow so we can all enjoy this. We can't keep stopping him while he's doing his job. Please. Yeah, that's my point. Because we're not going anywhere. I think if you make something, you yeah. wait for his uh, status software to appear. Then whatever command that you, you miss, you you looked into the uh, into the command thing that is running. Then you you type and then you follow because coming in and out will make this work difficult. Hello everyone. Hello everyone. Uh, please, let's let's inspire. Hello everyone. Please allow the instructor to also moderate uh, the program. Instructor, if uh, and someone then, brings a question and you want to pick it, please pick it. We are all yeah. having different backgrounds. So yeah. let's try to accommodate each other a little. And also, please, Mute it. if you miss something, just open your eyes a bit wider and try to see if you can see mm. on the screen. Okay? Thank you. Okay, over to you, Instructor. And then if you miss anything, I, I think... Everything I'm talking about in this session is in the Google slide. So you can go to the Google slide. So the command ED and BR like this, you can find them in the Google slide. Okay, so let's now talk about saving data in Stata. Um, the, the previous speaker made an important point. Um, so the, the session we just talked about, right, about opening data in Stata was if your data is actually in a Stata format, in a DTA format, right? There are other ways we can open, open data in Stata. Um, if it's in SPSS format, you can still open it in Stata. If it's in Excel format, you can still open it in Stata. But that will mean that we import it into Stata because it's not a, a Stata format. So we need to import it. And we're going to talk about it. But before that, let's talk about how to save data in Stata. And then to be able to do this, you... I'm sure you see my Stata screen. So you, you click on, again, you click on File Menu and then scroll down to Save As. I mean, if it's the first time you're saving your data, you click on Save As. And then you have the option to save your, your data, right? So for instance, we can save this data. We already, we already have this data saved, ends and heights, but we can save it in another, another name, let's say A. A, B, C data, and then click on save. And then it's going to ap appear in a DTA format. So DTA means it's a Stata file or it's a Stata data. Um, that's not quite difficult. So let's move on to the next thing. Um, so the next thing to talk about is importing and exporting data and saving, saving it into DTA format. Um, so most of the times we have data that are not in Stata format. They are not DTA format, right? So for instance, if you get the data from World Bank, it normally comes in like Excel format. And then to be able to use it in Stata, you need to import it into Stata because Stata hello, doesn't- Hello, sir. Yeah, go on. Hello, sir. Please, sorry for interruption. I was following you uh, faithfully, but you know, I just missed that part where you talked about to save data. Please, sorry for taking you back. How to save the data. I think you type a command ABC. Can you please just repeat that process, just like that last process? Sorry. 
Yeah, so, so to save data, right, you just click on file, the file menu, right, at the top, the oh. left, at the, the left or top, and then you click on save us. If it's the first time you're trying to save the data, you click on save us. If you click on save us, a pop-up opens for you to save your data. And then you can save it in, in the name you prefer. So let's say we want to save this data as earnings. You type earnings and then you click enter you, or you click on save, right? You click on save and it, it saves it for you. If you don't want to go through the steps, I mean, still there is a command and this is a command. There's a command. You can see it in the command window. Right. Do you get it now? Yes. Yeah. Right. Yes, I've gotten it. Thank you, sir. All right. So let's now talk about importing and ex exporting data sets into and out of data. Um, so yeah, as, as I was talking about, normally we we have the data in different formats. We have it in SVS, we have it in XLS, we have it in um, SPSS format, you know, and all that. But with this session, I'm just going to talk about importing XLS data into Stata. And most at hand, especially for people that are doing economics, we use data sets from the World Bank. World Bank indicators, you know, data sets. And they normally come in Excel format. Right. And it's very important that you, you should be able to import it in Stata before you use it in Stata. So I'm going to talk about it, how to import Stata into, sorry, data into Stata. To be able to import data, again, let's go back to the file menu. The file menu does a lot of things. Go back to the file menu. And then you have, you can see import, right? So you go to import and then you see you have so many options. You can import XLS data set. You can import CSV data set. CSV and XLS are almost like, I mean, they are Excel documents, but CSV is kind of different from XLS data set. You can also import SPSS data sets, SAS and all that. In this example, you are going to import an XLS data set. So scroll to Excel spreadsheets, the first option, right? And then click on it. When you click on it, this option opens for you. Obviously you click on browse because you want to locate the data set you want, you want to import, right? So you click on browse. And then again, you look for where on your laptop, you saved your data set. Mm -hmm. So for me, I saved it on my desktop. So I click on desktop. And then I look for the folder I saved it in. I saved it in the Stata class folder. So I double click, it opens. And then the data we are looking for is practice data one. So let's use the practice data one, which is already in an XLS format. So click on it and then open. Have you been able to do up to this part? Yes. Okay. Yes, uh, yes thank you. Yes, yes, so, yes, yes. Uh, but then don't click on don't click on okay yet. So we are, what we are going to do is um Hello, sir. Um, Please, can you, can you drop the, the uh, Excel file on the chat box so we can download it? I think you guys have it. I, I we already it. have it. If you extract we already have it, it. Have it. Yeah, somewhere, you will see where it is. We already have it. That week one, it's inside. Or when After extracting the week one, you see okay, it. Okay, it. okay, okay. Yeah. okay. Yeah. Give us then, two minutes. <laughs> yeah, so this is very important. With the importing data, you need to import the first row as a variable name, right? So if you look at the, the table you have in the preview window, you have um, row column, 
yeah, you have row one, right? Which has like the ID variable years and age. But what we are going to do is to make sure that these names are in the first row in our stata. So you click on import first row as variable names. You get it. Import first name as variable names. And then click on OK. Because we already have data open in stata, it says, do you want to continue? So okay, yes, continue. And then it opens for us. Okay, if you guys followed, you can see in the variables window that we have variable ID, we have years, we have age. If you want to browse what this data set looks like, you click, you type BR, enter. And then this is what we are dealing with. We have different identification numbers, one to five. Um, we have like five different years from 2019 to 2023. And we have different age groups, 20 to 61. Yeah, so this is what we are dealing with. Um, now that you've been able to import this data, probably you, you don't want to be going through all the hustle, right? To be opening your Excel and all that. So you want to, you want to save this data into Stata format. We've done this before. Just to save it, again, go to File, click on save as, and then give it a name, any name you want to save it. So let's say new data, and then click on save. So we've been able to save this data set from Excel format to Stata format or DTA format. Okay, so, Let's do this. Let's clear. Let's clear our stata. Let's clear the stata. Um, and then, and then do something else. We'll be we'll be exporting data set, right? We are going to export data set. So let's open. Let's go back and open the earnings and height data set. Let's go back and open the height earnings and height data set. And we are going to export that into Excel format. Please, how right. to clear the data? Can you show us again? So in your command window, just, just type, type clear in small letters, clear. OK, thank you. And data is case sensitive. If you type clear in capital letters, it's not going to respond. So make sure it's in small letters, right? It's very case sensitive. Again, let's open the earnings and heights data set. File, you go to open, you look for where you saved it, and then you open it. So this is a, this is a data, um, this is um, a DTA file, which means it's, it's a stata data set, right? We are going to export this stata data set into an Excel data set, right? Or Excel format. So to export, again, you go to file, you can see the export um, button at the file menu. And then you can export it to any data set of your choice. You can export it to SPSS data set, that's SAV or Excel format. So let's export it to Excel data set or Excel spreadsheet. This pop-up opens. And then the first one is saying that if you want to export any specific variables of your choice. So for instance, you just want to export the sex variable or the age variable, you can type it. Sorry, if you want to export the educational or the years of education variable, you can just enter it. But if you want to export the entire data set, then you just leave it blank, you just leave it empty, right? And then you click Again, you click on save variable names to the first row in Excel, which is very important. And then you click on save as. You locate wherever you want to 
save your data set and then it give you the name. So I'm going to save it on my desktop called new. And then you click on save and then click on okay. And then it's going to save it for you. So we've now been able to convert or we've now, we've now been able to export um, the earnings and height data set, which was a DTA file or a data data set into an Excel format. And it's located on your computer. Anytime you want to open it, you can just open it. All right, so let's move on. Yeah, we've done this. The next thing to talk about is the log files and then the do, do files, which are very important. Log files are very important. Do files are very, very important. Um, so again, if you look at my state right, look at the left, you will see the command window. The command window has all the, all the commands that we've been running so far in our stata, right? All the comments. And it's very stressful to go back to, you know, entering all these commands again in stata. So to, to avoid yourself from, you know, all this struggle, what you do is you need a, the log file. Sorry, the do file. What do, what's this do file does is it keeps all the commands you've been working with in a particular place. Such that if you want to go back to all those commands, you just open it and then you run them. You don't need to like, you know, keep on typing all the commands and all that. So to open a log, sorry, to open a do file, I keep on using log file and do file at the same time. So to open a do file, you just click on window, the window menu at the top, just near the user menu. Or the help menu. So you click on the window menu, um, click on do file editor, and then click on new do file. The shortcut is control control nine, but I've I've never kept it in my head. So you click on new do file editor, and the do file opens. So this is where you can be able to save all your commands, and then everything you, you tend to like work with in in Stata. And then you can also, you can, one thing you can do in the do file is to describe exactly what you're trying to do. So for instance, to um, say we want to open, a, we want to open a new data set in Stata, right? What we do is we click on star on our keyboard, right? And then explain that, okay, so I'm going to open a new data set, open data set. And then I already have, we already have um, the command to open data set, which has already been kept in the history window. So we can copy it and then go back to the do file and then paste it. All right. For all the commands that we've been working with, we can just copy them. We highlight them and then copy and then keep them in the do file, such that anytime we want to go back to what we've done previously, we just open our do file and run all these commands and everything will be done for us. Wow. Without necessarily like um, going back to type all these commands. So yeah. All right, so um, let's try working with this do file and see how it works. Okay, so let's go back to Stata again and clear our Stata. Let's clear the variables we already have open in Stata. And then go back to our do file. So let's assume that we want to open our earnings and heights data set, right? We have the command in the do file. So what we do is we highlight this command, this first command, the command we use to open data set. And then you either click on control. I don't know which, which laptop you're using, but on Mac, on MacBook, I think it's different. 
on Windows, you just click on Control D. If you're using Windows, you click on Control D and it's going to run whatever command you've highlighted, All right? If you don't want to click on Control D, what you can also do is, again, let me clear my um, state and then go back to the do file. You highlight the command you want to run and then you look at this button right there. It says execute selection do or execute selection to back a do, right? And then you click on it. When you click on it, the command is going to be executed. So we've been able to open this data set in, in um, Stata without going back to type all the commands or going back to the file menu and all that. So the do file is very important. It helps us to save our commands. We can go back to them anytime we need them. It's very, very important. And then you can save the do file. If you're using Windows, again, you just click on Control S or you click on File. Again, click on Save As. And then you find wherever you keep your data sets and then save it there. So I'm going to keep it at on my desktop, um, Stata class, and I'm going to name it Do File. It's saved. So anytime I need it, I just open it and then work with it. Let's also talk about um, log files. Delita, just a small concern on the do file. Okay. Uh, is there a way I could uh, uh, copy the file, uh, the commands straight without uh, copying, uh, control copy and then pasting in the uh, do file? The way I can automatically transfer, maybe by clicking, and then all the the commands are put in the file in the do file. Yeah, that's a that's a good question. Um, I'm not sure if there is a way like that in state. There might be, but I I'm not really sure. I mean, this this is the way I've been doing it. I just copy and paste it in the okay. the do file. Yeah, there might be a way. I'm not sure, but I'm not really too sure about if there is a way where you just transfer it. The commands into do file, but I mean it's not difficult to just copy and paste, right? So, <laughs> um, yeah. So let's also open the log file, which is equally important as the do file. But the difference between the log file and the, the do file is that so the log file keeps track of everything, everything you do in Stata. Once you begin a log file, it keeps track of everything you do in state. It keeps track of um, the commands you run, the results you get, and all that. So to open a log file, click on file, scroll down, you open, you see log, right? Now, since we've not already opened a log file, it says begin. So you click on begin. And then it's going to ask you to save, to give it a name, how you, have, how you intend to save this log file. All right, so let's save its log file. And once again, I'm saving it in my Stata class document. And then you click on save. And then you have this output result, which says you've opened a, a log file at, uh, on the 13th of October, 2023. It's, I mean, I'm in Hawaii, so my time is quite different from yours, so. And yeah, once again, log file keeps track of everything you do in Stata. So let's assume we want to, um, we want to do summary statistics, right? We are going to talk about it formally. We want to do summary statistics or SUM, S-U-M. We want to SUM, our age variable. You click on it. This is the result we have. So we know there are like 17,870 observations 
the maximum age is 65, the minimum age is 25 and all that. Okay, so now let's go back to file menu, right? Let's go back to file menu, go to log and then click on close. We want to close the, the log file and then see what we are going to get in the log file. Close it. Um, and then please ask. Okay. I understand the questions are supposed to come uh, later, but um, is there any reason why uh, when I go to log, my begin is not active? What does it show? Um, the begin, it's there, but it's just not active as in I can't click it. Really? Yes. And I understand, understand from the chat, I'm not the only one. Wow. Me too. Um, I think you can just oh. select close, then after you close, yeah. You can select it again. You see the beginning, it will be working. Have you Just already select. opened the log file? I think why it's not opening, I have I had the same situation. What happened was there was a command that was open and it was asking if um yes or no. So I didn't touch it, but when I went back to click no, then it exited that place, then the log file showed. So try oh, to hello. minimize. Right, 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 hello. right. I got it. Thank yeah. you. I got it. Yeah, that, that's what happened. So everybody should do that. It's what the Thank log you. file will appear. Thank you so much for that. Are we all sorted with that? Are we all okay with that? Yes, yes. 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 If your beginning is not active, it means close will be active. Yes, so close yes. It and then the beginning will be active. Exactly. So far as your beginning is not active, it means that a uh, lock file is already working. So the close rather will be active. So just click on the close and then the beginning will be reactivated. Then you can proceed. Okay, so Honorable Joe, please continue for us. Please, right, so. sorry to interrupt, mm -hmm. but then can you just uh, start again, maybe on the, the log, log file. Thing. Yeah. All right. So, so once again, the log file keeps track of everything you do in Stata. If you run a regression, the result is going to be displayed in your log file. And we are going to see how the log file looks like. So don't worry. If you run some statistics, if you run anything in Stata, that shows in the width, that shows in the output command it's going to show in the log file so once again to open a log file click on file the file menu scroll down to log and as Kwame said if you already began a log file you need to close it and then I mean start again so in this case I do not have an active log, log file opened so I will click on begin and then a pop-up opens for me to give it a name, the name of the log file. Anyhow, I just want to save it, right? Um, so let me save this as log file one, and then click on save. So we've now begun a log file, a new log file is in, is in session. So now let's just do something in Stata, right? Let's do anything in Stata. Suppose you want to run some statistics and to run some statistics in Stata, you click or you type S-U-M, sum, right? You click enter or you don't even click enter. And then you select the variable you want to summarize, right? The variable you want to, the variables are in the variables window. So we select whichever variable we want to summarize. So we can choose the age variable. We can choose education variable. We can choose even race. And then go back to the command window and click on enter. And then you can see the outputs displayed in the outputs command, right? Which shows that we have 17,870 observations for each, for age, education, and race. The highest age we have in the data set is 65 years. The lowest is 25. Um, race looks like a categorical var variable, one to four. 
yeah, and it's obviously a categorical variable. Um, and then years of education is from zero, which means the person doesn't have any, I mean, the person hasn't been to school before to 19 years, which is the highest um, years of education in a data set. Another thing we can also do is to run regression. This is just for the purpose of creating log file. This, this is not part of, I mean, the session today. It's going to be for next week, so don't worry. To run regression in state, I just type REG, that's basic OLS, REG. And then let's say we want to run um, linear prediction of earnings on education. So in this case, you're running returns to education, right? How does your education affect your wage? Uh, uh, sorry, sir. I, I typed that command, but I don't see those variables. Should I open uh, the... Did you type some... Um, I don't yeah. think... I don't even have the variables, too. I don't think... Have, have, you, loaded, have you loaded your height, earnings and height data? Yes. Um, yeah, so select, your, select the variables, you will see it now. Yeah. In your variables window, do you see the variables, sex, age, MRD, education? Do you see them? No. No, it's not no, there. No, I, I equally don't have that. Okay, so, so what that. you have to do is, what you have to do is open, to open your data set. So let's open the data set. Hello, you know to open the data set, right? Yes, yeah, okay, okay, let me open the data yeah, set. Yeah, open the data set. Yeah. Please open it and break it off so that we can see clearly what you think. Okay, I opened and it appeared now. Thank Very you. Good. So you can now. Which open, one, sir? Open, yeah, any and hide, hide or what? And then okay. open your log file, which I'm sure you know how to open your log file. That hello, sorry, presenter. Hmm. Okay, sorry. Can I ask my question? Okay, go on. Okay, please. In the, in your out in the output you have, where you have um mean standard deviation, mean minimum and maximum. Hmm. Yeah, I will. I want to ask. Um, I was expecting to see maybe standard error too. I don't know if. We it's possible to activate that. You want to see standard error of, yeah. of what? The variables. Yes. Is it is that possible yet yeah, with this package? We start. I mean, standard standard error is for doing inferences, right? On your yeah, I'm, yeah. Yeah. So now that we are not running a mover or you know regression. I'm not sure. Okay, okay, okay. But if you if you use that, we see standard error when we do that. Okay, yeah, if we do that, we are going to find standard error. And that's going okay. to be for next week's next week's presentation. Okay. Okay. We're also going to see standard error in ANOVA, ANOVA analysis. Okay. Okay. So okay. Soon. Okay. No problem. Thank you. Yeah, this brings company is just for basic summary statistics. Again, what did you say? Presenter, I beg you, please. Uh, for the comment session, I, I can't hear you. The comment session. So why you get a comment session? Huh? The, the, below, the, below the comment session. Drag it up a little bit. So we, sorry, I can't hear you. Are you there? Are you hearing me? Yeah, I can hear you now. Yeah, I can, I can hear, hear you now. I can hear you. Okay, good. I'm talking about the comment section. Why you get a comment? Why you tap in? Can you drag it up, up a little so that we can see what you are tapping, please? Oh, okay. That's fine. Sorry about that. Good. Sorry. Thank you. Thank you. So is yeah. it okay now? All right. Thank you. Yeah, so. All right, so please, I, mean, I have a question. Okay, go on. Okay, so can you use a log file from another data set on a new one? Like, yeah, you can. For you can okay, you can okay. Obviously, use. So, there, so that's one advantage of using log files. 
So I don't need to close and begin a new log file to use the log command. Oh, you mean log file, not do file? Yeah, log file, yeah. And like you said those guys, you... those guys that were experiencing the problem of um mm -hmm. the begin button not working. Mm -hmm. And do they need to close the the log file that and you say and someone said it was because a log file has been opened already. Do they need to close that log file first? Is there any yes. implications like for closing the log file first? Or can you just choose the one that has been op opened before on your new data set you're trying to work with? Yeah, so um, in, so for their case, they were not actually aware that they have a log session open, right? Like a, a log file already opened. So that was a problem with them. But either than that, I think they could have just moved on with that. All right. Without Thank necessarily you. closing it and opening another log file session. Okay. Yeah, they were not aware of what was actually going on. That's why they were asked to close it and open it again. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So we already have a log file in session. We've begun a log file, right? So let's go back to the file menu. Again, back to log and then close it. We So the idea behind what I'm doing is just to show you what the log file is all about, right? It's just to show you what the log file is all about. So let's close our log file. And it shows that our log file has been closed on this date at this particular time, right? And- Hello. Okay, go on. Question. Yeah, please. I want to know how the variables were, were generated. The variables in endings and height. Oh, okay, okay. You mean the variables we have in our data set that we have in Stata now? Yeah, what, what we have here, uh, where we have the age, the education, and race. I yeah. just want to know how they were. So, those are this. Data set is a data set that was used by someone in um, a paper. I don't know if I can remember the, the name of the study, but it's, I think it's, it was on earnings, ability, no, 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 height, ability, and earnings. It's it's a study like that. You can search it on Google Scholar or anything. So this, this is a data set they used. So I think it was a survey kind of something they did. So this data set actually exists, you know, for a very long period of time. And we are using it. We didn't generate it ourselves. It's it's a data set okay. that exists. It's a stated data set that exists. Someone used it for, I think she's a female, I don't know, for a study. And then we are also trying to use it. But I, I got this data set from the Stock and Watson Econometrics book. I mean, that's what I use for my master's. So we have to like do several exercises on this data set. And anyone who uses Stock and Watson knows what this data set is. Stock, Watson, the econometrics. Okay, so let's go back to log file to see what we did with the log file, right? Let's click on file. Let's go to open and then look for our log file and then open it, click on it, click on open. That's how it looks like, right? And it shows that the log file shows that on 13th of October, 2023, we, we opened the earnings and height data set, right? And we, we ran the summary statistics, which we, we just did previously, right? Um, that's the only thing we did. That's why you're always say, seeing this. But if we should have done several other things, like running regression or running, um, let's say, installing a command or anything like that, it would have shown on the log file. So the basic idea is that log file keeps track of everything we do in Stata. It remembers everything we do in Stata. So, so normally when you're doing your econometric homeworks with Stata, your professors will ask you to create a log file and then send it to them so that they will, they will be able to keep track of whatever you did in Stata and they'll be able to give you marks. 
or maybe you yourself you want to create a log file and then keep it for your own use you can use it but for me personally i don't use log file what is very important to me is my do file because typing in commands is very crazy so you need your do file and then later on when you want to use a command you just go back to your do file and use it um that should be it for log file and do file can we move on I have a question. Okay. Can we add more um variables to do to this log file? Like if you do another um if you do another thing, if you, if you tackle another question and everything, can mm -hmm. you add it to this already existing log file or do you have to create a new one? Yeah. Let's see. Let's see what's so, so you, you want to say you don't want to like create a new log file, right? Like what he's asking, yes. can we edit this log file, right? Yeah, that's that's mm -hmm. something like that. Um I'm not really sure, but I don't think we can edit it. I, I don't know, let's see. Um open log file. It says edit. Mm, I'm not sure. I think once we've closed it, the best thing to do is to open a new one. I'm not really sure. But I think the best thing to do is open a new one and then start a new log file session. Right. It might be possible, okay. but yeah. You can try it when you are free. I mean, it's one of the ways we learn. So. <clears throat> Later on after this class, I'm going to try. All right, so um, let's... Let me take you back to my Google slide. The next thing I'm going to talk about is commands and syntax and stata. Um, there are so many commands in stata, so, so many commands. And ever since I started using stata, one platform that has been really helpful is the stata forum. When you Google it, normally if you're looking for a, a command to run a particular type of um, analysis in Stata. You can you can go on this um, Stata forum and ask your questions. I've seen people like Woodridge. You know Woodridge, the, the famous econometrician. He's all over Stata forum and he answers most questions. He answers lots of questions. So um, we are not going to do so much commands because I mean, these days it's quite, it's quite easy to find any command you want to work with in Stata just by going to the next. So we are going to look at the describe command. We look at the summarize command, which is basically for summary statistics or descriptive statistics. We look at the sort command. The sort command is just to sort our variables in like lowest to highest, something like that. And then we look at the tab command. The tab command is just to explore our variables. If you want to explore which, what variable you are dealing with, you just click on tab. All right, so let's go back to Stata and do this. So once again, I hope we all have earnings and height data set open in, in Stata, right? So, Um, just as someone asked me that, how did we generate these variables? Uh, we didn't generate these variables ourselves. There's a data that exists. It's a stated data that exists that was used by someone. It's a service that someone collected to do her studies. So it ex exists. But suppose we don't know what is going on. We don't know what sex is. We don't know what age is. We don't know what MRD is. We don't know what a height is. You can basically type so go to your command window and then type DES. DES basically means you want to describe your data set or your variables. Click on, so you type DES and then you enter. And then this is going to describe your data sets or the variables you have open in Stata. It says all the variables have like 
17,870. I mean, there are 17,870 observations. And there are 11 variables in total. 11 variables in total. We have the sex variable, which is just, you know, gender or sex. We have age, which is just the age of the individuals we have in a data set. Um, these things are even important. I don't know. We have the age variable, which is, which measures, you know, the education of individuals. We have C worker. So C worker means the class of the workers we have in the data sets. What class are they? Region is just to represent, you know, which region they are in. If it's, if it's China, it's going to be province. Uh, race is just for ethnicity, whether the person is white, black, you know, all that. Earnings, they didn't describe earnings, but basically earnings is just, you know, like how much you earn from your job. We have heights, we have weights, and then we have occupation. Yeah, so that's one thing about describing data sets in this data. Um, let's also explore the summary statistics command. So to summarize your data set in Stata, again, we've done this before, you enter S-U-M, that's sum. Um, and then you select whichever variables you want to summarize, right? So you move to your variables window and then just right to the left, you see this arrow. I don't know if you see it on my computer. You click on it, you realize sex has been selected. You can select age, you can select marital status, you can select years of education, class of worker, region, race, earnings, height, weight, occupation. And then you- uh, so, yeah. Sorry, sir. Okay. I, I've opened the data file and I, I, I I get the description, but then I see I go to the variables. I don't see the 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 the, the name and the label as as you're indicating, as you're showing. Um, do you see your variables command? Hey, sorry, variables window. It's to your left at the top. I got, yes, I see. It's only it does not show what uh your screen shows. Um, do you see sex? Do you see any variable open? No. I I only see name and label. That means you've not opened your data. So open the earnings and heights data. I've opened it and I I I the, I click the command D D S and I get the description like yours. But then really? I wonder, yes, I can see the description like yours, but I, I don't see the variables. So I don't know what's wrong. That's that's interesting. If it's if your data is open, I think it's it should show in the variables. Right. Um, can can you can you try opening your data set again? Just again, clear clear your state and open it again, and let's see. So I I put a clear command. All right. Yeah, clear. And uh, kindly hold on. Uh, hold on with you, please a minute. Okay. Do you please see the variable uh, panel where you have variables and mm -hmm. it there is properties? Do you see that one on your extreme right? I can see variable. Yes. Then you can see the properties under, right? Variables, I only see name and label. No sex, no age, no education, no region, no whatever. Only so then it has why. to do with the data we imported. So so you need to import the data file to your stata, then you will see all those things. Yeah, open it. Ah, okay. Yes, no need to import, it's just state of files or anything just open it okay maybe i should open it yeah so can we move on all right so this um right there on the screen is the descriptive statistics normally when you're writing a paper when you're writing a journal article right it's very important that you report summary statistics and it summarizes your variables. <laughs> it gives useful information about how your variables look like. So for instance, um, 
when we look at variable like, I mean, some of them are categorical. So the mean and is the mean doesn't really make sense. But when you look at earnings, right? The mean, when you look at the mean of earnings, it's like 46875.72, which means the average person in this data set ends like 46,875 US dollars if the study was conducted in the US. Um, the average person earns like 46875 US dollars. And the average weight is about 170.35 in whatever um, measurements or scale it's, it's in. The average height is about 66.96. Um, <coughs> average age is like 49, sorry, 40.91. And then the standard deviation talks about um, the variability in the data sets, right? So, yeah. And then we have the minimum values and we have the maximum values. The maximum value of earnings was that was about 84,054 US dollars to as low as 4,726 US dollars. The minimum age was 25, the maximum age was 60, 65. Um, the number of observations is about 17,870 for all the variables we have. Okay, moving on. Let's 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 do this. So please everyone click on sorry, type B R. I have a, I have a question, sir. Uh, what about that point four four? Mean for the sex. Point four four. Yeah, that's I mean that's um so sex is just a, a binary variable, right? Okay. Zero if the person is a female, one if the person is a male. So okay. I'm not sure if the mean has like yeah. That's why I didn't okay. talk about. Okay. Yeah, so if yeah, any anytime you see variables like you know from a minimum of zero to one, that should indicate that we are dealing with dummies or binary variables. Zero if let's say uh, you are zero if you're that. No, let me not use this example. Zero if you are work, you are not working. One if you're working, you know, those are dummy variables. Um, zero if you live in an urban area. One if you live in, an, in a rural area, you know, those kind of um, variables. Those are dummy variables. All right, so let's, Hello. yeah. Sorry, can you hear me? I can hear you. Okay, so uh, I have a question regarding uh, occupation. Okay, is there a code for for it that shows uh, six point zero something? Yeah, so occupation in this case, I'm I'm guessing is a categorical variable. So okay. I mean, occupation cannot be continuous, right? So yes. it can be like one is you know. So so let's okay, let's do this. Let's see what is going on with occupation. So let's click, let's type tab, T-A-B, right? And select occupation as a variable. So tab occupation. We just want to tab start occupation and see what's going on. And then click on enter. So the occupation is like from one to 15, which, I'm not sure it's going to be continuous. So again, let's let's browse our data set and see what's really going on with um, occupation. Click, you type BR, we've done this, right? And then click on enter. Um, there you go, it's, so it's from one to 15 again, but I want to assume that if we open the PDF, the data set I sent, there is a PDF that describes these variables. So I'm sure if you open the PDF, it's going to explain what one here means. So probably one means um, the person works 
as a retailer or as a cashier. One is an executive manager. Yeah, executive manager. Yeah. And the 15 is labor. Labor, yeah. So occupation is actually a categorical variable. So, I mean, they are just like codes, right? One is representing this, two is representing that, and all that. Okay, so another thing we can also do with the tab command. So let's tab start, T A B, sex, enter, and see what's going on. So it says um, zero if the person is a female, one is if the person is a male. And there are more females in this data set than males. Right, there are about 55.8% females compared to like 44.19 male population is in this data set. And they all sum to 17,870 observations total, which is this. Right. Okay. So again, let's let's browse our data set and see what's really going on. We are going to use the sort command. So I want us to first take a look at our data sets before we use it. So let's type br, browse, click on enter. And then let's look at this variable, our age variable. You realize age starts from 48, 41, 26, 36, 35, 25, right? So our, our age variable hasn't been sorted. We've not been sorted. So one thing we can do is to sort variables in Stata. And the command is just sort, S-O-R-T. And then select the variable we want to sort, which is age. We click on it and then click on enter. Again, Let's go back to data browser and see what's really going on. BR, which represents browse, and then click on enter. Now we realize our age variable has been sorted from the lowest to the highest. Don't forget when we did the summary statistics, we saw the minimum age was 25, right? So we've not been able to sort our age variable from 25. And when we scroll down, the highest should be like 65, which is this. So that's with the sort command, if you want to sort our variables. Let's move on to the next agenda. Uh, sorry, sir. Can I have a question? Right, sorry. So what is tab, tab command? Tab command, what is it? Sorry. All right. So. The tab command is if you want to tab start your, I mean your, your variables and be able to explore how or what your variables look like. You just want to explore oh. what your variables look okay. like. Okay. Okay. Thank you. So, for uh, instance, can I have a question? All right, go on. As we sort the age variable, mm -hmm. but age was related to the observations. Like, uh, suppose it is a female has an age of twenty. Five at observation number two, wouldn't it distort the data, which will be a problem for us in the regression analysis? In the regression analysis. Um. All right. So that's 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 an intelligent question, right? So we suppose we want to estimate um, the impact of, let's say, experience on earnings, right? And in this case, we're using age to represent experience, right? I mean, several papers have used it, even though there are, there are issues with it. Um, I don't think whether our data is sorted or not, it's going to have an impact on our regression analysis, to be honest. Um, so no, let's... My, question, my question is, suppose uh, I'm a male, someone collected the data from me, my age is suppose uh, 25, Hmm. And I'm a PhD and we sort the age. So my age goes down or up. My number is changed. Yeah, so my education yeah, that's, that's actually going to change. That's actually going to change. 
So if it changed, wouldn't it distort the data and affect the regression results? Um, for the regression results, I don't think it's going to affect it. I think what is going to affect it does not have any effect. Suppose yeah. we want to we want to um graph our data, right? Um I think that's where the problem might be. But for the regression results, it, I'm not sure it really matters if we sort or it doesn't we don't sort. I'm yeah, not from, really sure. From what I saw after the sorting, the whole data, like each row goes with that uh, sorted uh, column. So, so variables doesn't change. The only thing is that it comes up. If you watch the occupation before, it was easy to see was sorted with the occupation, but now we sorted with the age. When you age. go to the occupation, you see 13.5. That's so true. That's, that's true. so the data yeah. is not changed. It's just that you sorted it with a particular variable. Yeah, that's and true. That variable. Thank you. That's, that's a nice observation. And we- Let me answer the question for him. I understand the questions. Let me answer him. Uh, go on. Okay. Yes, he said, for example, if you sort age, will it distort the remaining the remaining data set? So the answer is no. Just the last speaker, what he said, if you sort age or if you sort age alone, the whole data will also be sorted. So it will work simultaneously. It's not going to distort the remaining data set. Yeah, so we so going back to the data browser, right? Initially, it was like you know the sex variable was just female throughout, right? Before male comes like way later on, but then after we sorted age, you know, it just changed. So it's this showing that this individual one who is a male, so let's say individual one who is a male is twenty five years, and then this female is also twenty five years. This male person is a twenty five year old, year old born. And then all that. So this 25 um year male has never been married, you know, and all that. So yeah, I mean the question, I think the question has already been answered. So but are you okay? Are you okay with the with the answer? Yes, thank you very much. Thank you. Um, thank you. Thank so, you, everyone. Right. Um, Lecture okay. Joe, I wanted yeah. to clarify something here. The sort command on theta works like Excel expand when you filter a data or you sort a data and then you expand. So once you sort your data, when you go to do your regression, it wouldn't affect it, as uh, the gentleman just said, because it expands and sorts all the variables in terms of the column together. So if you have a doubt, you should try it in Excel when you are sorting your data and then you choose the option to expand your sort. And then you have a practical understanding of what happens at the background. Thank you. Thank you, um, admin. All right, so let's let's move on to, I think we, this is going to be a whole long lecture. Um, let's move on to renaming and labeling data setting state. So one thing about theta is for every variable we have, right? And I'm going to assume everyone, everyone has obtained um, yeah, the earnings and height data set. So every, for every variable we have, we can rename it. We can change the name to a different name. And then we can also label it. So if you look at the variables window at the, at the right, right, we have what did I do? What did I just do? Yeah, so we have name, we have the name column, right? And we have the label co column. So the name column is, you know, the, the names of our variables. And the label is just um, how the variable is lab labeled. I mean, what's what's the variable? What's the variable all about? The name, yeah, the label of the variable, just put it simple. And then, yeah, we can we can rename variables in state. To do that, again, there are two ways. Either you use the menu, the menu option, or we simply use command, state of command, which is very easy. Um, let me first use the menu option and then probably we can use the command option. So yeah, to name, to rename a variable, 
we just go to um data data utilities all right we name groups of variables okay all right so let's let's do this again so we name a variable let's go to data go to data utilities look for rename groups of variables if i'm right which i think i am click on it and then it says rename list of variables so let's select you go to um, the bar that is open right here. it says existing variable names select whichever variable you want to rename so in this case let's rename let's rename mrd let's rename mrd so we click on mrd and then we click on the new we enter the new name we want to give to it right so you can just call it marital marital if we don't want to close this um, pop up we can just click on submit and the data is going to run it we can now look at the um, variables window and then we will find that MRD has been changed to marital right it's been renamed to marital we've been able to rename Mar MRD to marital status I mean there's a command to do this without necessarily going to the data menu to do it and the command is simple it's just this command and it says rename and then you put the old variable name. Let's assume you want to change the name of race. So we click on race. That going to be the old data name. Old variable name, sorry. It should be in a bracket, I guess. And then we click, we enter a new name for it. So let's say, let's just call it race with capital R. Research capital R. Click on enter. And then you should see that we've been able to rename race from small R to big R. So that's that's how to rename variables in the state. The next thing to do is to label um, variables. And then again, going back to the variables window. You realize earnings doesn't have any label. Height doesn't have any label. Weight doesn't have any label. Occupation doesn't have any label. So we can actually create labels for them. We can okay, create- uh, Hello. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I just want to know, we, we've sorted age and we've sorted sex in uh, independently. So I want mm -hmm. to know, can we sort uh, two data sets if we want to kind of analyze them, like yeah. uh, with age against their earning capacities, or we sort height, just height and age, as we have uh, in the variable, suppose uh, we have age and we have, uh, is it their job or something? So I was kind of thinking, or oh, inquisitive about knowing if we can just sort age and their earnings alone directly. Is it possible? Um, okay, let's see. If we can do them independently without affecting the other variables, is that a question? Sorry, sir. Is it necessary to to continue uh, to to open the lo log file so as no, it's, to it's record not everything? It's not necessary. I can just close it. Yeah, you can close it if you want. And everything will be recorded as usual. Yeah, you just close it and everything will just be in there. Um, so the, the, the question that the previous person asked, I mean, do you want to, are you saying that we, we want to sort two variables independently without affecting the other variables? Is that the question? Yes, more like, hmm? I, mm -hmm. I want to analyze uh, uh, a data set here 
we get to aggregate or compare the age of uh, age variable against the earning variable. Earning variable. Yeah, I think we should be able to sort two variables at the same time. Um, but as to whether it's going to affect the other variables, I mean, from what we've seen before, I think it's going to affect all the other variables. From what we've seen, but then we can we can sort more than one variable at the same time. So, for instance, just as you you asked, right? We can sort age and earnings. All right. So, let before that, let's take a look at how our variables look in data browser. That's how it looks like, right? Age starts from 25 to 65. Earnings start from 28. Okay, earnings start from 28560.39. I mean that's that not that's not the lowest. So I mean that's not really sorted. So let's sort these two variables and see what happens. So we sort age and earnings. Enter. And then let's go back to browse our data and see what happens. I mean, there has been changes, right? There has been changes. Sure. Yeah, it's sorted, yeah. So yeah, so we just sorted age and earnings. For me, it cannot show. Can you repeat, please? Sorry. Can you repeat it for one time? For one time. So, I think that if I get him right, the question I was asking is if we can sort two variables at the same time or independently without. I think we can even sort three because I just tried it and it's sorted. Sorry, what did you say? I said, I think we can even sort three because I just tried it and yeah. sorted here. Yeah, we can actually sort more than one variable. So let's okay. see what you thought. We, can, we can sort it from the data, the data on the taskbar, different hmm. options are given. And how do you do that? Can you tell me? Can you please go to the data and then sort? Um, the data? Yeah, on the top bar, there is data on the okay, test data. bar. Uh, and then, then sort, sort mm. combine sets. And then we select the variables. And you manage to, to, we can Sorry. do it from there. Yeah. Uh, manage two data sets. We can do manage. it from here. There are many options. Mm. Mm. Yeah, so with, I mean, without using the command, you can you can do anything in Stata using this um, menu distance at the top. So, um, all right. So let's go back to the Google slide. Did we? No, we've not labeled variables. All right. So let's try labeling variables. Let's try. Once again, there are two ways we can do this. We can either use the command or we just go back to the menu. So we are going to do the two at the same time. Whichever way you feel comfortable with, you just adopt it. Um, so to label variables, right? As I said, earnings like this doesn't have a label. Height doesn't have a label. So we can just create labels for them. The command is, so you enter label and then you select whichever variable you want to label. So we want to label earnings. Um, is that right? What's the text? And then, and then you click on, no. So let's go this and see. Let's see if this is going to work. You click on the label you want to give to earnings. So let's say earnings, let's call it earnings of 
individuals. I hope this works. And then click on enter. See it's invalid syntax. Okay, so probably this should be in brackets, I guess. Let's see. I'm not sure. I'm not sure this should be in brackets. Still doesn't work. All right, so let's let's use the other option. It's going to give us code and then we copy. So to, to label to label variables, right? Let's just go to data. I think you are forgetting to write var after earnings, then you can let variable then earning in the okay. command. All right, let's that's fine. So let's let's use this approach first and then we'll get back to using um command. I mean state of command is just all over the internet. So let's go back to the data menu, right? And then you scroll down to data utilities. Scroll down to data utilities and then look for label utilities. And then look for label variable. We can label a whole data set. In this case, we just want to label a variable, a single variable. So you click on label variable. This pop-up is going to, to open for us. And then we select whichever variable we want to label. We want to, I mean, yeah, label. So in this case, we want to label earnings. So we select earnings. And then the next bar says new variable label, which should be up to like 80 characters. So let's call it earnings of individuals. And then click on okay. Yeah, so this, yeah, so this is what I was looking for. Um, so now let's go to the variable command, eh, sorry, variable window. You realize before earnings didn't have any label, but we've not been able to label it to uh, earnings of individuals. Um, I, initially, I didn't know the importance of this until, until I started working with WDI dataset. WDI dataset, when you download it, there's a special um, hello. Yeah. I think uh, the librarian is used to create the data. So it's not important to write now. So when you are creating the data, it's just like your questionnaire. Like the data you have more like a questionnaire. So if you want to, let's say you have cells, cells you have like male and female. Mm -hmm. yeah. Human. Hey. I, mean, I can't talk again, baby. Huh? Uh, please continue. Uh, yeah, so. continue, continue. Oh, no, really? Continue. Yes, please continue. Okay, okay. All right, let's let's now let's use the command. The command I was looking for and I wasn't really okay. So this is a command we have here, right? Um, we can just copy it and paste. And then, so let's let's now create a label for height. Let's create a label for height because height doesn't have any label. What's what's height in a data set? Or let's, yeah, what's height? So what we do is the command is label followed by variable. And then we select the variable name in this case, which is going to be height. And then we give it a label. So let's just call it height of individuals. And then click on enter. So we've created a label for height as well. Once again, um, we can copy, don't forget that do files are very important. So we can go back to the history, the history window, right? You can copy this command and then go back to our do, oh, my do file is closed, sorry. Yeah, so if it was open, you can just go back to the do file and paste it. Fortunately, I closed it. Um, all right, let's let's move on. The next thing is talk to talk about installing packages in Stata. I mean, Stata has lots of packages. Packages that helps us um, do so many things in Stata. So, for instance. For instance, um, one thing we can do in Stata is 
suppose we run regression in stator, right? Let's say we regress earnings on height. We have the regression output. <laughs> Um, my laptop is slow. So one thing we can mm. do with this regression output is to export this output into Word format, Word, right? And there's a command for it. I mean, there's a command for everything. But normally, because um, some of you are just new to Stata, you might not have this command already installed in Stata, which means you cannot use it unless you've installed that command unless you've installed a command. And to install any command in Stata, this is the command we use. We use this command, ssc install, and then you click on the package you want to install. Let's see, let's say we want to install Outrig 2. Command. So Outrack 2 is actually a command. It's, it's a command we use to export state regression output to Word, Word format. Most of, most of the regression tables you see in research articles are probably exported using Outrack, Outrack 2. I'm maybe saying most is wrong. Yeah, but yeah, so let's install Outrack 2 in Stata. So you just click on, you just type SSC install, followed by the name of the command. Then you click enter. And then it's going to read for us. It says, checking Outrack 2 consistency and verifying not already installed, right? But it says all files already exist and are up to date. It's just because I have Outrack 2 installed in my data. That's why it's but for people who have not installed Outrack 2, this is going to be different. I mean, it's going to install it for us. All right, so let's move away from ins installing packages and in And then- uh, uh, Please, Joe, can you move to the ANOVA for us? Because we have just five minutes. ANOVA, okay. Yeah, so like we wrap up with the ANOVA and then All right. we call it a bit. Uh, yeah, so let's do ANOVA. I mean, yeah, just as I said, I've, I've never done ANOVA before. Today is, so I had to quickly go on the night I mean, I have not slept. So let's, let's do ANOVA. And I mean, if from our statistics books, right, it says, if you want to just compare many groups simultaneously, you want to compare the averages of Mali. Our variables simultaneously. One thing which is very important is that so ANOVA actually analyzes variances or it shows how spread apart individuals are within each group and even between groups. So basically, ANOVA deals or uses this hypothesis that population means and the consideration are all equal against the alternative hypothesis that population means are not equal. And it has several uses. One, one example we can put is that um, different fertilizer groups might have different impacts on the weight of crops. So yeah, we are going to do that example in a data set or in Stata and then explain what the output is being spitted out for us. In the mobile impalient, they record that. All right, so let's, let's clear our data set. Let's clear data. And then we are going to use a new data set, which I actually then sent to you. All right, so let's go to our file menu and then scroll to example data set. Let's scroll to example data sets and then click on data. In my case, it's data 18 manual data sets. Click on it and then click on basic infer basic reference manual. Um, so we are going to use. Uh, do it again, please. 
Alright, so done. Do it again, please. Alright, click on file, right? Click on file and then click on example data set. Do you see it? Example data set. And then go to the last option, state whatever version you have, manual data set. And then click on base reference manual. We have so many data sets in state, but we are going to do an over analysis of variance. So we're going to use one of these um, variables. So the variable we are going to use is the, I guess it's the Apple data set, Apple DTA. So click on use, click on use, just um, close to Apple DTA. Let's see, yeah, that's what we are going to use. Are you there? Yes, sir. All right, so you can see in your variable window that we have treatment and weight. Um, I actually don't know what this data set is referring to, but my guess is that they are looking at that the effect of different fertilizer groups on the weight of crops. I believe that's what they are trying to test. Different fertilizer, fertilizer groups on the weight of crops. All right, so. I mean, ANOVA has several assumptions that one, the observations should be IID, right? A random sample. Um, that standard deviation should be the same for all individuals. Um, what we are doing in this case is just the one way and over. So one way and over means we are just looking at one independent variable on the dependent variable. It's different from two way and over. Two way means we are dealing with two independent variables on the dependent variable. So in our case, we are just dealing with one independent variable on the dependent variable. That's why it's called a one-way ANOVA analysis of variance. Okay. All right, so to do that, again, let's go to um, statistics. Let's go to the statistics menu. I mean, there is, there is a command for it. Let's go to the statistics menu. Let's go and then scroll to linear models and related, right? To your right, you will find ANOVA stroke MANOVA. And then look for one way ANOVA. You will see it. And then you click on it. Click on one way ANOVA. The response variable is going to be a dependent variable, which, which in our case is going to be weight because you're looking at the effect of different fertilizers on the weight of crops. And then our factor variable, which I call it the regressor or the independent variable will be treatment. So let's select treatment. And then we can run our ANOVA. This is the result that shows up. Do you, does everyone see this result? Yes, Please, yes, can you yes. repeat it yes. again yes. for us? Do it again. Go back to where you got the data. Uh, OK, where I got the data? Yes. OK, again, click on the data set we are using. It's a data set that is already um, installed in yes. Stata. Right, it's in Stata. I didn't give this data to you. So you click on File. Go to Example Data Sets. Mm -hmm. Right, click on it. Um, just scroll down to the last option. You see data. In my case, it's data eighteen manual data sets. Click on it, and then select the very first option, which is base reference manual into brackets R. Click on it. When you click, there are so many data sets we have data sets for ANOVA, we have data sets for ANOVA post-estimation, we have data sets for AREG, AREG post-estimation. But we are just going to do ANOVA, analysis of variance. So let's, let's use one of these data sets. We are going to use the Apple DT, this one. 
Okay. So to use it, just go to your right and click on use. Just click on it once and it's going to load into your stata, um, into stata. You can also describe this data set by clicking on describe. So click on it once, describe, and then you can exit this window. You realize um, the data set has been described. That treatment means um, we are dealing with I mean, fertilizer, different groups of fertilizers. And then weight is the average weight in grams. Right. So I think I don't know what this data is, but I want to hypothesize that um, we want to estimate the impact of different fertilizer groups on the weight of apples. Yeah, because the name of the data is apples. So different fertilizer groups on the on the weight of apples. So to do the analysis of variance or ANOVA. And in this case, I said, we are going to do just one way and over, one way, which means we have just one independent variable, which in our case is treatment or fertilizer. All right, so again, go to statistics. Are you following? Yes. All right, go to statistics, linear models and related, and then look for ANOVA. It's in capital letters, so it's very easy to find. Right. And then to your right, look for one way and over. And then you click on it. You will find response variable. Response variable means your, your dependence variable right? or your regressant. So in this case, our dependence variable is going to be weight. And the factor variable is just the independence variable or the regressor, which is treatment. Right, so select weight for the response variable and treatment for the factor variable. When you are done, you just click on OK, and the results will be displayed for you. Are the when are the outputs in there? No, I so I, before this, I, I should have actually done. Plotted some box plots. Should have plotted some box plots. Um, yeah, so I mean, let's go back to this. I know there's there is no time, but let's do this really, really quick. So going back to the Google slide, right? It says our ANOVA hypothesis that hypothesis that the population means of all groups under consideration are all equal to zero. So that's the the null hypothesis that the means of all groups, in this case, the treatments are all equal to zero. That's what we want to test. That's the hypothesis we want to test. Okay. Um, normally before running an over, what we do is we, we try and plot the graphs or the variable we want to use, right? Um, so, and the graph, the basic reason of plotting the graph is just to give us an idea of what's going on, right? Whether the means of, of, um, yeah, the means of our, this is a dependent variable, yeah. The, the means of the dependent variable are kind of, the same across groups, right? And one thing we can, one way we can do this is to plot box, box plot. So you click on, I mean, let me go back. Click on graphics. You click on graphics, look for box plot. You click on it. And then let's just use vertical box plots. And then you select which variable we want to use. So we are going to select weights. And then click on categories over here. You click on categories. And then click on group one. Of course, we have just one independent variable. So we are going to use just one group. So group one, we select treatment. And then click on OK.
My laptop is quite slow. It's going to pop up, yeah. All right, so this, this is a graph we have. And the graph is just plotting the average weight of apples alongside the different groups of fertilizers. So let's say group one, fertilizer group one has about as high as close to 120 grams apple weight, right? Um, the treatment group or the fertilizer group two produces um, close to about 60 grams yeah, of apple weight. But then the basic reason of plotting this is, is just to give us a fair idea of what's going on. You realize, so box plots, um, this line in between, I mean, within, what's the name? Is it a whisker or whatever? The line in between is just the median because box plots is just you know, in percentiles. So it's the median. So what we realize is that treatment group one has a higher median compared to treatment group two, right? Um, group three and group four almost have the same median. But then this indicates that there are variability in different means across different groups. There are variability in different means or different averages across different groups. But don't forget, our hypothesis says that, our non-hypothesis says that the means and the consideration should all be equal. Meanwhile, this graph is saying that the means, I mean, these are medians, but it also gives us a fair idea of how the means are going to behave. So the means are kind of different across groups. This is higher than this. This and that, three and four are quite close. But I mean, they are not the same. And even within the same group, right? So let's take treatment group four as an example. Even with, within the same treatment group four, you realize the box is kind of, um, um, the height is, I mean, higher than the other groups, right? So within, within group four, there are higher variability, even within group four compared to the other groups. So yeah, I mean, plotting the graph just gives us a fair idea. And normally we do this before we run the ANOVA, ANOVA test or the analysis of variance. So I just wanted to state it before. All right, so, I mean, we then move on to the regression output for one way ANOVA. And then you will see between groups and then within groups. We shouldn't have closed this. Within groups and between groups. Hello. Yeah. Actually, I didn't see. Uh, I was following you when you were doing the graph, but how the graph now popped up, I couldn't see mine. And I know it's late already. Blessing. Because some people have already set time for six o'clock. So I don't know. Maybe you can um, start from here in the next time. A little bit faster. The... You, mean, you, mean, you mean the graph? Yeah. All right. So I mean, I, mean, graph, I was following you in the graphics. Then the graph of your own pops out. I can't see any graph in mine. All right. So um, do you, you see this? Again, you see this command? Do you see this command? No, I didn't see anything. No. Do you see the command I've highlighted on my state up at the command window? Yeah, within groups. Yeah. Is it in mine? No, no. I mean, look at my state up. Yeah, I can I can see your state. You see graph box weight comma over treatment. No, no, no. Really? Okay, I should that's what I should write. Yeah, yeah, write the same in your state and let's let's see what what pops okay. up. Okay. It should it should come. Yeah. All right, so yeah, oh, I can see it again. Graph box weight and what? Box. Okay, uh, sorry. Um, box weight comma over bracket treatment. 
Okay, so, okay. Yes, yeah. okay. Can I move on? Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So I can see it now. Right. Is that blessing? <laughs> um, would you, would you please, uh, would you please after the the group? Please. It doesn't mean that. Hello. After the first can group, I didn't me? follow you. Would you please? Hello. Yeah. Hello. Okay, please. Um, does it mean that after we go to the graph, uh, graphics, after imputing um, our uh, variable and everything, we still have to go back to the center and type those graph box with something like that before the graph can pop out? I, I don't get your question. Like, you, this thing started from graphics. You started yeah. from graphics, graphics you selected yeah. bo uh, graphics box and all those things. Yeah. After that environment, so we need to go back to the stator and type uh, in the command. No, you, you don't really need to. So, so I've how, said that. How, how is it that mine couldn't pop out after I followed until I went I to have, the stator? I have no idea. Maybe, I don't know why. Hmm? Um, but it should have it should have opened. It should have yeah, it has opened. opened. It has opened. Yeah. So you, you can either type in the command or you just follow the approach, you know, going to the statistics graphics <laughs> and box plot. Yeah. So I so let's just I just want to look at this graph vis-a-vis -vis our analysis of variance output. Right. Um you realize that we have the SS means sum of squared. So we have sum of squared between groups and it's just measuring the variations in the mean between the different groups we have. So in our case, we have four different groups. We have group one, two, three, four. And the groups are just the different types of fertilizers that are being used, right? Now, if you compare the value we have or the sum of squared, sorry, sum of sum of squared between groups, it's about five to nine five point five four, right? And then within groups, it's just four nine three point five nine, right? Now let's go back to the graph. You realize um, there is so much variation within between the groups, right? Treatment group one has like a high median compared to treatment group two, which has like a very low median. And then we have treatment group three and then group four. That explains why we have higher sum of squared between groups, which is about 52.95. So there's so much variation that exists in our treatment or treatment groups compared to within groups, right? If you look at treatment group two, within that box plot, box plot, you know, it's, the plot is just very tiny, it's, it's very small. The height isn't, you know, that um, tall, it's just small. So within groups, there are, there are less variations that occur within groups. So yeah, in a nutshell, the between groups actually represents variations that occur across groups. And then within groups is just the variations that occur within each group. And then the total actually is a summation of the sum of square between groups and the, and the within groups. DF simply means um, degree of freedom. So we need to allow for some degree of freedom. And this is how we, we calculate it. So for between groups, it's just going to be, we have, it's just going to be K, K simply means the number of parameters, no, sorry, the number of groups. So in our data, we have four different groups, right? We have group one, group two, group three, and four. So it's just the number of groups minus one, which gives us this. Within groups is just the total number of observations we have or the sample size. Um, no, 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 that's not the sample size. The, 
yeah, the total degree of freedom is the sample size, which is about, we have 10 people, right? So we have one, two, no, not 10 people, 10 different apples. 10 minus one, that gives us this. But for the within groups, degree of freedom, it should be, wait, let me, let me recall it. K minus N minus one. Sorry? K minus N minus one. Is, is uh, uh, treatment multiplied by the, the minus uh, one. So uh, that, that should actually be, what did you say again? Is a one way ANOVA. If you uh -huh. check the if you check the within group uh, degree of freedom uh -huh. is uh, six. Yeah, it's six. So that yeah. that should be n minus k. We have uh, we have uh, four different types of uh, fertilizer. Yeah. Then we have uh, ten apples. Apple size. Yeah. Yeah. It is. Uh, so that's n minus k. Yes. Yes. Okay. Thank you. All right, so, and then the mean squared error, which is MS, is just um, this sum of square divided by the degree of freedom. But what is really important is this F statistic. So the F statistic is just, you know, when, when we are doing regression analysis, we tend to use T statistic, but for ANOVA, I think we use F statistic. What it's measuring is that under the null hypothesis, right? which states that all the means across the groups are, are the same, whether this is going to be significant or not. And to check whether this F statistic is significant is to look at this probability value. Now, when we compare this to 5% critical level, this is, this is obviously less than 5%. This is like 0.13%, right? So, which means we can now reject our null hypothesis that, um, that weights or average size of apples across the groups are all the same. So, yeah. That average, yeah, average. That the null hypothesis, null hypothesis isn't true, or no, yeah, we reject it in statistical terms. We reject the null hypothesis. And then this sure. is very important too. Um, the Badlets equal variances. Um, so one of the assumptions of ANOVA is that standard deviations should be the same across groups. Standard deviations should be the same across group. But if you look at what I've highlighted, right, this test here is actually testing that there are equal variances, right? It's testing under the null hypothesis that there is equal variances. And then once again, we look at the probability value, which is far more than 5%. Wow. So, I mean, we do not have enough evidence to reject the null hypothesis that there are equal variances which means our third assumption for ANOVA holds, which is very important. There are three assumptions. One is that there should be IID sample, random sampling and equal variance. Okay. Uh, what else? Okay, thank you. Thank you, Joe. Uh, I no. think we should try and understand you also and excuse you. I presume it's almost late, right? Mm -hmm. It's it's twelve twenty four a.m. <laughs> wow, <laughs> uh, we apologize for keeping you that long. I'm sure by now you would want to retire to bed, also. Yeah. So, uh, family, uh, fellow colleagues, hello. Can we say a big thank you to our doctor, our candidate, to for him coming to at least walk us through this important session. 
We thank you so much and we Hello. do appreciate the love. Thank you so much. Thank, no, thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. 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 Okay, uh, so we, can we proceed? Really appreciate it. Why are they? Why are they? Thank you. Why are they? Please, um, thank you very much, Kwame. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Hello, everyone. That will be better for us. Yeah. Thank you. 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 Hello, everyone. Yeah, hello. 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 Okay. Hello, everyone. Can we can we proceed? Hello. Can we continue, please? Yes, please. Come and do. Okay. So once we thank Dr. Joe for helping us and at least gracing us with his knowledge, I believe it is a lot for you to take in. It's a lot, and the good thing is, we will make the recording available and the slides also available. So please exercise some patience and when we provide the video and then the slides, you can go through again. If you have questions, feel free okay. to ask. You will not learn Stata in a day. No, you can't do it. So this introduction, it's a very good foundation. And I appreciate the way he has been very patient and very, very, very patient. Like, really. I was wondering where he got the patience from. So I would encourage us, like, when we go back, let's try to do the project. Just do the project where you find difficulties. You can always come back and then ask questions. With this said, I am posting the project again in the chat box. And I'll put them in the retard group. So please take notes of the project. I would like you to take about five to 10 minutes break, and then we can have a short QA quest, uh, session. <clears throat> Is that okay? If you want to grab a cup of water, feel free to grab a cup of water. If you want to walk, feel free to walk around for five to 10 minutes. Organization of African Academic Doctors, OAAD, exists to design a full solution mm -hmm. geared towards mm -hmm. sustainable development of Africa. Mm -hmm. OAAD has mm -hmm. mm -hmm. members in over 70 countries, bringing together African professors, entrepreneurs, scholars, government and diverse sectoral leaders with a shared experience of PhD training and shared passion to enhance the quality of life in Africa through research, technology and innovation. Working tirelessly to make Africa rise beyond horizons using what we know and what we do, OAAD affiliated entrepreneurs and researchers have attracted meaningful funding from diverse global organizations. OAAD, Doctoring Solutions for Africa and the World. The Organization of African Academic Doctors, OAAD, exists to design informed solutions geared towards sustainable development of Africa. Since its inception, OAAD has rapidly spread across the globe with members in over 70 countries, bringing together African professors, entrepreneurs, scholars, government and diverse sectoral leaders with a shared experience of PhD training and shared passion to enhance the quality of life in Africa through research, technology and innovation. Working tirelessly to make Africa rise beyond horizons using what we know and what we do, OAAD affiliated entrepreneurs and researchers have attracted new as global organizations. OAAD, doctoring solutions for Africa and the world.
The organization of African Academic Doctors, OAAD, exists to design informed solutions geared towards sustainable development of Africa. Since its inception, OAAD has rapidly spread across the globe with members in over 70 countries, bringing together African professors, entrepreneurs, scholars, government and other sectoral leaders with a shared experience, PhD training, and shared passion to enhance the quality of life in Africa through research, technology, and innovation. Working tirelessly to make Africa rise beyond horizons using what we know and what we do, OAAD affiliated entrepreneurs and researchers have attracted meaningful funding from diverse global organizations. OAAD, Doctoring Solutions for Africa and the World. Organization of African Academic Doctors, OAAD, exists to design informed solutions geared towards sustainable development of Africa. Since its inception, OAAD has rapidly spread across the globe with members in over 70 countries, bringing together African professors, entrepreneurs, scholars, government and diverse sectoral leaders with a shared experience of PhD training and shared passion to enhance the quality of life in Africa through research research, technology, and innovation. Working tirelessly to make Africa rise beyond horizons using what we know and what we do, OAAD affiliated entrepreneurs and researchers have attracted meaningful funding from diverse global organizations. OAAD, doctoring solutions for Africa and the world. Hello, everyone. I think we can come back if we've stretched a little bit. So we go through the remaining, those who are interested, those who want to stay for that part. For those in this part of the world, please, can you all hear me? Yes, please. Excellent. Yes, please. Thank you. Yes, so we can. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes, so my name is Udi Elijah, and I'm very excited to have been part of the conversation today. And uh, with uh, plenty of thanks to the leadership of uh, the UIB ASA, the African Students Association of the UIB DJ here. And also bringing very warm greetings to uh, from the leaders of OAD. And um, just want to quickly make a brief reading of the introduction of the organization. And um, so the Global Organization of African Academic Doctors, OAAD, uh, uh, is a competency-based, grassroots, multidisciplinary, multi-professional, international NGO, which brings together a growing number of African PhD holders and PhD scholars high-end talents from over 50 African countries, okay. residents across Africa, the Asian continent, Australia, Europe, and North America, where they are contributing to global... So where they're contributing to global sustainable development as professors, researchers, innovators, and entrepreneurs. With a numerical strength target of 200,000 high-end talents, representing at least 150,000 families in about 50,000 villages across Africa, 25% of whom run their own businesses, and others being specialists in over 1,000 research foci and industrial orientations. OAD has a duty towards Africa 
We make things happen for our members in order to ensure they keep increasing their ability to engage the world with most remarkable competitive advantages while innovating alongside their villages and communities towards actualization of the SDGs in Africa and the AU Agenda 2023, the Africa we want. The vision of OAB is to enhance the quality of life in Africa through research, technology, and innovation. And our mission is doctoring solutions for Africa and the world. The main objective is bringing together African intellectuals to foster development while engaging relevant internal and external stakeholders. Ladies and gentlemen, this has been the brief introduction of OAD, and we look forward to having more conversations with us for the rest of the five, uh, four weeks we'll be engaging. We hope to dig further deeper. And for anybody who may want to know further things about the OAD, you can check the website, africanacademicdoctors.org. And you could also contact us uh, I will yes, put um, that on the chat box shortly. Uh, we'll put that on the chat box on, shortly. Online, uh, and online, we will be yeah. able to um, also provide a phone number for those who may want to contact or those who are uh, uh, Africans and may want to get involved to contribute their quota towards some um, advancement of sustainable development in Africa able to uh, guide us as we move forward. Thank you very much for your time and attention. Looking forward to having the best of time remaining. Thank you so much. So, and finally, uh, we've had today more than 400 people signing in. You have seen the quality of what we're bringing and in the future we'll be bringing even more. Uh, make sure to reach out to your colleagues, your friends. We have made provision for 1,000 uh, uh, spaces for everyone. Let's fill it tomorrow. Uh, let's fill it next Saturday as we keep um, driving the process. Thank you very much once again and do have enough time. All the best, everyone. Over to you, Kwame. Uh, please, could I be heard all through? Yes, please. Uh, we heard you and we Excellent. do appreciate the support, the love, and the impact. Uh, we say thank you. Uh, so, uh, fellow colleagues, this is the little we were able to do today, but <laughs> trust me, it's not little. When you start playing with it, you realize you've gotten a foundation, and next week we'll build on it. So, I see Ali Hamdala. I'm sorry if I got the name wrong. Your hand is up. Do you have a question? I have um, a contribution. I just want to say one thing. Oh, feel free. Yes, as regards the section of question and answer, I think it would be fine if everyone can actually um get their question noted during the course of the lecture. Then after the time, after the lecture, then there should be a room for question and answer where everyone will have the time to ask questions based on what they understand or if they need more lights to be thrown to a particular section then the person in charge should be able to assist with the um, clarification on that particular part. Because while the lecture is going on and everyone seems to be talking or everyone seems to be asking questions, it should be like we are going back and forth every time, which is not going to be a nice one. Because you end up seeing someone asking a similar question which have been answered before. So I, in my own opinion rather, I feel, um, everyone should note their questions down at the course of the uh, at the course of the lecture then when it is time for question and answer you can actually ask your questions and um justice will be done to to every question that's going to be raised by anyone of us thank you very much once again i really appreciate the lecture and you have a wonderful evening. hello moderator okay so thank you so much for uh giving us the insight we do understand like the question sometimes draws us back, you know, it kind of affects us negatively. But since some of us have no idea about data or even data analysis, we are encouraging that people can ask some questions in order for them to get a better understanding of the program. 
Oh. However, we also ask that people should do it in moderation. It's sometimes, yeah, some of the questions may be a bit annoying if you have an upper hand of uh, Stata. So we also ask that you bear with us, but we'll try our best and regulate it for the next session. So we will take it into consideration. Thank you so much. Uh, hello, Ali. Can you please right, ask welcome. your question? Hello, Ali. Okay, hello. hello. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I am with you. Yes, please. Uh, the very thing, uh, I'm new to Stata, but when the teacher is doing like uh, opening data statistics, He's doing this very fast. So He's doing very fast. Basically, basically, everyone after that asked to do it again. So if okay. in the design of his teaching method, he could do it once, he say, I say, okay, another one, then that uh, a lot of people won't ask. That is the one thing. Oh, okay. So uh, the other yeah, thing... Please... Okay, please continue. Okay. Please okay. continue. The, yeah, the other thing is, like you can't uh, you can't uh, let people ask uh, at the moment they want. Like let's say working twenty minutes opening the area for questions. I think with time we will you will have you will know from the beginning the nature of the questions that will be asked. asked. And also there is a a good uh, good good thing that is said by other people that you gave us the materials earlier so that we can review them and we 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 do, do not distract we do not need to go through a lot of things at the same time like going back to the slide or not, that oh okay, okay. thank you that's, so much that's, I all. Do appreciate. that's all thank you okay. thank you so if i may ask which part of the statistics didn't you get are you okay with it now yeah i'm good i'm good I'm good. Oh, okay, then that's good. Thank I'm, you so much. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. So the next person can talk. I think I see. You can lower your hand for us. I see Oluwa Seyi. Hello. Yes, please. You can. Hello. Yes, can you please. hear me? Yes, please. We can hear you. Okay. My, my name is uh, Kanduro. <clears throat> I've been uh, since the beginning of the session, and the session actually is very nice. And I would like to congratulate all who prepared it. But uh, I have a little bit of a uh, concern that I would like you to address if it is possible. Uh, okay. I understand I understand that there is a, a WeChat group that has been created and uh, the group is the forum where most of the materials and the data set are shared there. But most of, uh, of um, a good number of people and especially who participated today's session, they are not in that group and they do not have access to the group. So I think um, if you you pick uh, you pick through the questions, most of the people like wanted to have the link to the group where they can also access the materials and the data set that are sent in the group, and that would be very helpful, uh, like uh, to 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 be in the group and to, to access those things. So if there is any way here in this forum, the link can be shared. That can be very much appreciated. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you so much for the insight. So what we did was the first group had 500 people. So the second group, we were worried if we should share the QR code into groups, people may end up joining the second group again. So we told that uh, we told others that if you know someone you want to invite to the group, just add one of the people in the group, either uh, the chairman of OAD, uh, Nancy, Sam, few people and then they will add them to the group. With this said, uh, are you still in the group or you are not in the group? I I am not in the group and I don't know I don't know how to access it. Oh okay so I shared a list of people you can add them on WeChat and then they will invite you to the group. In the chat box in the chat box right? Yes in the chat box I provided some to WeChat ID. You okay. add them okay. and then they will invite you to the group. Oh, okay. okay. Thank, Thank you, you very so much. much. Okay. So Thank please you. lower your hand and another person. The next person can. All right. All right. All right. Hello. Yes, please proceed for us. Please, can I go ahead? Yes, please. Okay. Um. Thank you so much for organizing this program, and. 
one of my question, okay, just let me ask one, is that during the practical aspects, um, there was a part, a particular part I didn't get, and that was the last part, the ANOVA part. I yeah, want, yeah. What, what happened was, um, after I clicked on the data set, I was, uh, my data was not responding. I couldn't load the data and I couldn't practice what was being done. So I wanted to know before the next class, is there a means of getting to uh, know how this problem can be solved so that I would be able to know how to, uh, I'll be able to know what to do before I move on to the next uh, stage, which, because I assume that maybe next class will be learning something new. Oh, okay. So that is true. The next class will be something new. And I think you posted your error in the group. Yes. So were you connected to the internet? Yes, I was. Okay. And even now, are you still having the top? It's still the same problem. It's Every time same. I click on, on that Apple DTA, it goes to not responding. Okay. So the point is, if you want to import the data, like as he did, you can equally use the command, the use command. So I'm not sure if, are you in the WeChat group? Uh, yes, I joined a WeChat group. Okay, okay. So if you're in the WeChat group, kindly after the discussion, just post like, my, I couldn't import my data and then I'll record and send it to you. Okay, thank you very much. Thank, thank you so much. All right. Okay. Next question. Uh, me too. I experienced the same problem. Could you send me? Oh, you also had the same problem as well. Yes, yeah. very much so. Yes, yeah, so I, I think you should just put it on the WeChat. I also experienced the same. Kwame, me too. The same thing. Me too. The same thing. My tool okay. was not loading the data. Yeah. The data wasn't loaded. Okay. No, no, no. There's this error that pops up. Uh, six zero three. Yes. Six zero three. Yes, exactly. Right. Yes. Yes. Okay, I'm not but, sure. Sir, the please, exact... I have a question as well. Apple sure work through it. Hello? Yeah, hello. Okay, so this is the error system. I have a question also. Okay, please go ahead. Uh, I prefer uh, to arrange some minutes uh, for a revision before the next uh, class because most of us are confused uh, uh, in doing this procedure. Okay, so uh, before the next class, we will have between 30 to one hour pre-session like we did this evening. Okay, so you can attend that one because we cannot organize another one because almost every one of us has classes or other things to do. So if you have questions, post it in the group, either the organizers or anyone in the group can respond to it. And if not, you come for the next session, one hour before the time, which we start at three, and then we will deal with it. Okay. Thank you very much. You're welcome, sir. Thank you very much. Okay. okay please, um, I have a question also. Uh, can you let him finish? I think he has a follow-up question. So Hello? Hello? I think she can come on so, like the person has finished. Okay, so please continue. Ask your question. I think we have like seven minutes, so let's ask the question. Okay, so okay, Kwame, my everyone. question has to I do really with so. wait. My question has to do with um the certificate at the end of the four weeks. Yes, please. So there are people who are not using their real names um in the meeting. So at the end of the four weeks, how will you be able to trace to know that all these people will be required uh, requesting for the certificate? participated in the four weeks sections. Okay. So we said, when you are registering for the certificate, we said, mm -hmm. put the name you'll be using to attend the meeting. And that is what we are going to cross check with. The point is, okay. we are not interested in getting so many certificates out there. 
So that's why we even put like that 15 RMB cap on it to discourage others also. So if you help us by not putting <laughs> the name there, right? <laughs> I think that would be good for us because yeah, getting those certificates will take time for us. So okay, okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh young yeah, hello, ma'am. Can you please ask your question? All right, good day, everyone. I really do appreciate this class, like it's quite timely. I've been seeking to, you know, in um enroll for such um trainings but um my concern though at the moment is um i'm trying to catch up because i joined a bit after it started a bit and later when it started so and i couldn't trace you know the files um the setup files and even and then I'm, i want to ask about the the choice of um, WeChat because it's obvious it has limited capacity and i'm wondering why didn't we opt for telegram where everybody could be in the class so the questions any everybody asks is going to be more interactive and everybody will follow up so i don't really know what why um the organizers chose wechat so i'm just wondering about that so and again how to get those files the setup files because i can't see it on this chat i can't see anything on this um chat Thank, oh, okay. you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I think uh, the data was posted in the chat box again. A lot of people reposted the data this evening in the chat box. The reason why we are using data, uh, WeChat is convenience. We assume almost everyone has data. Uh, almost everyone has WeChat. That makes it easier for us to go with it. And because this is China and WeChat is popular. So maybe next time, yeah, we would consider that. Remember, initially, we had wanted to even use Tencent meeting, but due to some restrictions, we opted for Zoom. So thank you for bringing it up, and we will mostly consider it. But for the data, please check the chat box. you see a zip file there. And also, for the group, if you're on WeChat, add one of the IDs I posted, and then they'll invite you to the group. Thank you. Any other questions? Yeah, hello. Yes, please. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, please, I can hear you. Yeah, um, with respect to the certificate, I would also want to find out that um, what about maybe two persons using the same Zoom link, as in taking access from the same Zoom link? What should we do for you to know that this is actually serving two people? Uh, that is very true, but it hasn't come to mind. But then I realized from the data that came, some even wrote Stata as the name and all those things. Yeah. Yeah. Because as I speak to you right now, um, this particular system we are using is serving two people. It's serving Susan and myself, Francis. So oh. how do we interact for you to know that uh, um, two persons attended the class and that will have the certificate at the end of the day, at the end of the four weeks. Yeah, I do understand. Uh, maybe we'll create an attendance system and use it from next week. But I don't want us to go the extra, like make things difficult, like put a lot of hurdles. So yeah, next week we'll come up with something that may be a solution to this. All right then, sure. Okay, we'll be looking so for. Yes, uh, so the question on the data importation, I think I'm able to import it with my data 17. The 18 is a bit slow, but the 17 works very well. So uh, this is the link. And one thing about data is you can use the command use, and then you put a link to a data and it will pick it automatically. So I'll share the command to the chat, and then yeah. those of you having issues with it, you can try. Yeah, so Kwame, uh, was... sorry to cut you, but um, we tried the command, it didn't work. You tried the command, it didn't work. Yeah. So I think after the meeting, I'll check with the data 18 and see if it has to do with the uh, particular data we are using. Oh, I should try the Okay, okay. Okay. Uh, any question, please? I think I'll turn it on. Hello. Yeah. 
Hello, Keith. Yeah, hello. Yeah, uh, thank you, Dr. Joseph, for this. Um, I appreciate this really amazing lecture. Um, God bless you. And the uh, second thing I want to tell my fellow students and all people who join this lecture to be to pay attention to the things. Let's see ourselves. We know like that day is for for raining this. We should prepare ourselves, prepare our PC, prepare our our everything. We should be ready. And the third thing is like we start all of us, we don't know how to use this data. We are in this is the first day. But we should pay attention for the instruction that our teacher gave us, especially on doing commands. When you will fail to like the example he gave us the step. If you fail to put one step, it means when he will teach the next step, some of the command will not function. So this is the thing that people forget about that. And prepare our PC, prepare our things that we use for study. So as everything can be better and we can cope to the time and then once we finish the call. We are really, really amazing. I want to tell you, my fellow students and all of students who are listening to this, please let be serious. Let's take time, prepare ourselves, prepare our PC, our iPad, tablet, and everything. So as to give the the good cooperation to our teacher. It's all that. Thank you, Dr. Joseph. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, mm -hmm. I will pass your comments on to uh, Dr. Joseph. So even with the date, I'm able to import it with data 15. So I will look into it and then see. OK, so please, any other questions? So we Hello, Dr. Up. Kwame. Hello. 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 Yes. Uh, do, you hear me? do you hear me? Yes, please, I can hear you. OK, uh, thank you very much for this important lecture. But uh, uh, there was a question in the WeChat. We chat uh, about how the people can join the WeChat, including myself. Then also um, should be better also to have the the recorded uh, recorded uh, lecture, which can even help us to to do um, to do it again, so that we for the next session we will be at least on the same level. Of, yeah, on the same level. Yeah. Okay. So uh, for the WeChat group, I posted a like people you should add on WeChat and then they will invite you to the group. So I'm going to post it again. I'm posting two WeChat IDs. Kindly add any of them and then they will like add you to the group. The reason is we don't want people who are in the old group to join the new group. That's the problem. But yeah, kindly add these people and join the group for me. But I will ask the chairman of OAD, if we can open the group and then we can share the QR code. I know this is disturbing, so kindly hold on for me. I'll, I'll also add this question. Hello, please. Please, you can add this WeChat ID and then she will invite you to the group. Okay. I already have the WeChat ID. Then I just wanted to include it too. And we can actually have um a PPT, like we can have the PowerPoint slide, maybe a bit prior to the time when we have our next class. If we can actually get the PPT before the actual class for the next time, I think that would be better. Yes. Oh, okay. So uh I would do that. I'll try and get the PPTs earlier so we can yeah. do that the next time. Okay, and second, we say for taking time. And this previous um, one that we have just completed this evening, uh, if we can actually also get the PPT uh, to be sent to the video. Yes, please. I'll be posting the PPT to the group right after. Okay. The PPT is already on online, so I'll okay. share the link and later on I'll download and post okay. it to the group. All right, that's fine. Thank you very much. You are welcome. Okay, so it's already seven o'clock and I'm not sure. Is there any other general question we can take? And how do we solve the issue of error 603? 
Yes, that's the error I tried and it works on my 17 and 18. I'll try with the 18 also, state 18 and see if that's the problem. If that's the problem, we'll find a solution around it. So please bear with us. So kindly add any okay, of cheers, the friends which are okay, cheers, bro. Hello. 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 Hello, we can hear you. Yes, please. So uh, I think with this said, we can wrap up unless you have any other question to ask. Um, Okay, so thank you so much for joining us. The Q&A, please, the next Q&A, let's try and ask questions from the lecture. Let's try and ask questions from the lecture. And the only way we can do that is if we close on time, have some 10 minutes rest, and then we come back and address some of the issues. So we'll be happy to see you next week. Please try the practical or the project we posted in the group. I believe you already have it or you've downloaded a copy, please try it out when you have difficulties. If there's something you can't do, post in the group and someone will assist you so that you can finish the project. Thank you so much for coming and do have a great week ahead. So see you next week. All right, thank you. Thank you for having us. We appreciate it. All right, see you next week.